So let's do a little graphing, shall we? Alrighty. Now I'm going to have to pick some points here. And we'll plot them and we'll connect the dots because that's that's how you graph, right? And you'll also notice that we've got some transformations going on here. We're going, it uh, looks like, three to the right and up to. Oh, man, this is going to be fun. So one of the first things I actually do want to talk about is where's our horizontal asymptote? Well, I know that it's usually at y equals 0, but since the function moved up 2, it's really going to be at y equals Two, so I can just pop that in there right now, and I know my graph it's not going below that, okay, so that 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 helps me shape my graph really now let's take a look at the rest of it, okay, so I'm gonna have to pick out some x values um how about I do let's say zero, and I'm gonna leave a little room just in case I do decide to do something a little less than zero. Let's go to one, two. Three. Okay, we'll do those. That sounds good. So my plug in zero, and you may need to use your calculator for this. If I plug in zero, I get two to the negative third plus two. Well, two to the third is eight, so I get one over eight since it's a negative exponent. So I get two and an eighth, which is going to be right around here. That's kind of it's a small one to, to plot, but we can keep going for it. So if I plug in, so it's two and an eighth, or two point one two five. Then if I plug in 1, see so here if I plug in 1, I'm going to have 2 to the negative second plus 2. Well, 2 to the negative second is basically, like, well, 2 to the second is 4, so it's 1 over 4. So we get 2 and a quarter, 2.25. So I can plug that one. And then let's see if I plug in 2, I'm going to have 2 to the negative first plus 2. So that's like 1 half plus 2, so 2.5. And then if I plug in 3, I'm going to have 2 to the 0 plus 2. So that's 1 plus 2 is 3. You know, why don't we keep going a little bit more. If I plug in 4, because now we're starting to get some, some better, nicer numbers. If I plug in 4, I'm going to end up having 2 to the 1st, which is 2 plus 2 is 4. And we can see it's starting to, sh to ramp up there. If I plug in 5... So I'm going to make another one over here. If I plug in 5, I'm going to have 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2 is 6. All right, we're starting to starting to increase. And if I plugged in 6, I'm going to have 2 to the third, which is 8. So I plug in 6, it's going to be 8, and then it's going to be 10. So I'm going to be off the charts. I'll be somewhere up in here. All right. I think we got ourselves a nice little picture here. So if I connect these dots, no, don't go below that dashed line. Boom. That's a nice looking exponential growth function right there. If, if I ever seen one, whoo, she birdie. Okay. Well, there we go. So, yeah, we, we ended up plotting a lot of points there, but it gave us a good idea of what this graph looks like. It's kind of hard to tell when they're all scrunched together here, especially when it's, like, that's tough to do two to the two and one eighth or, you know, or two and a quarter. Like, it's tough to plot those accurately. So it's nice to get to some of those bigger numbers, but we know it's going to get super close to our horizontal asymptote, and it's going to continue to rise up. Okay. Awesome. Let's try one more. All right, so we got another fun one here for us. Well, this time I got 4 to the x plus 5 minus 3. So it's going 5 to the left and down 3. Now I'm going to focus on this guy first. So if I know that usually my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0, it's moved down 3. My new horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 3. And I like to graph those first. It gives me a nice, like, I know the graph's not going to go below that line pending other transformations, it might be reflected or whatever. But you know, I know that's like a good point of reference for me. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's start again with zero and let's see what happens with this graph. Um, I, I may want to pick some values around there, we'll see. I just I want to get a good shape of this graph. And you can plug these into your calculator and use the table just like you've done in the past. So if you want to do that, you're more than welcome. That works for graphs to plug it into your y equals and then you know, use the table there, but we do also want you to be able to graph it by hand. So if I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to end up getting, let's see here, 4 to the 5th minus 3. Holy cow, that's going to be a huge number. 
So I'm thinking maybe what I need to do is I need to backtrack a little bit because, you know, if I do 4 to the 5th minus 3, that's going to give me 1,021. I'm not going to fit that on this graph. So, so I, need to, I need to rethink this, okay? So let's go, um, let's take her back a notch. How about this? I'm going to start at negative 5, and I'm going to tell you why. If I plug in negative 5 for x, I get 0 in my exponent, which is going to give me, so 4 to the 0 minus 3. Well, 4 to the 0 is 1, right? 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Oh, that's a nice point that'll fit on the graph. I like that. Negative 5, negative 2. All right, there we are. Let's continue. If I plug in negative 4, I'm going to keep on getting bigger. I get 4 to the first. So 4 to the first minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. All right, so negative 4, comma 1. Excellent. Okay, let's keep moving. If I plug in negative 3, I'm going to have 4 squared, which is 16. 16 minus 3 is 13. Cool. So negative 3, 13. Awesome. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm getting off the graph this way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make up another t-chart here real quick. And I'm going to go backtrack a little bit. Let's go to negative, let's go to negative 6. So I plug in negative 6, I get 4 to the negative first. Okay, I'm running out of space here, I'm sorry. So 4 to the negative first minus 3. Well, what's 4 to the negative first? Well, 4 to the first is 4, so 1 over 4 minus 3. So that'd be negative 2 and 3 quarters, so negative 2.75, we'll say. Okay, so negative 6 and then negative 2.75. And I think what you're going to start to see is we're going to get nice and close... It's a little too close there. Uh, we're going to get nice and close to our horizontal asymptote. Okay, and let's do one more. So if we had negative 7, which is even smaller than negative 6, then I'd have 4 to the negative second minus 3. So that's, if 4 to the second is 16, then 4 to the negative second is 1 over 16 minus 3. So it's going to basically be like negative 2 and 15 sixteenths, but we'll keep it in decimals. I think you guys usually seem to like that a little bit better. It makes a little more sense. So it'll be 9, 3, 7, 5. Okay, so super close to negative 3. I think we've got a pretty good picture as to what's going on now. Uh, and what we're going to have is connect our dots, and it starts to get way up there real quick. It's grown fast. I mean, it is 4 for your, you know, that's being raised to the exponent, so it's going to grow pretty fast. All right, so there's our, our exponential growth. Another one. That was fun. And again, I like to graph the horizontal asymptote first because it, I know that my graph is going to start flattening out there. That gives me a good picture. Um, and then you can just start, you know, picking some numbers. Something usually I start with making that, that exponent, either making the exponent zero or trying to find my y-intercept. It'll take a little bit of practice, but we'll, we'll get better at it, I promise.